So today I'm hosting a debate with pro-Palestinian author and activist Mika Pellet and pro-Israeli uh, activist Joseph Cohen, also founded the Israeli advocacy movement. So I'm going to jump straight into it and I'm going to start with you, Mikko. Uh, so st I'm going to start, hopefully, as much as I can, start from the beginning and then go from there and then we can really see how constructive this conversation can be. I know this really isn't the beginning, but, but we'll try. So on October the 7th, uh, can we agree that, that Hamas did that and it, was, uh, and it should be condemned? Well, on October the 7th, Palestinian fighters from the Gaza Strip came out and, uh, you know, engaged in acts of resistance. And so uh, I don't think there's any room to condemn people who resist oppression, occupation, and apartheid. I think if there's anything to condemn, it's to condemn the apartheid state, the brutal savagery that Israel has been inflicting on Palestinians for 75 years, and the fact that it brought the state of Israel and the Zionist movement brought the situation to a place where tens of thousands of Palestinian bodies now lay dead. And, uh, and the situation in Palestine is, is perhaps more severe than it's ever been before. So I believe that is, 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 is the terrorism that needs to be condemned. To condemn people who resist oppression, I think, is, is outrageous. Did they kill 1,300 people? We don't, know that yet. We, we don't know that yet. But we, the only thing we do know is that many Israelis were killed as a result of Israeli fire. We know that for a fact. That's been stated by, by the Israelis themselves. It's been stated in the Israeli press several times. Uh, a witness from Kibbutz Beri, where I have, you know, I had cousins, um, testified that she saw the tanks shelling homes in which many hostages were, 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 uh, were, were sitting, were, you know, were placed. And so we know that many were killed by Israeli fire. We know that Israeli Apache helicopters shot indiscriminately and killed many Israelis. We don't know if Palestinians killed and if they did how many. We don't know that because the information is not available yet. We also know that Israel has been engaged in murdering tens of thousands now, over 20,000 Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, and even killing Israeli, so Israeli hostages in the Gaza Strip. So we know that as well. So once again, if there's anyone to condemn, it's the Zionists, the Zionist movement, the state of Israel, that is the, you know, the actor in, in Palestine. And, uh, and do everything we possibly can to bring down this racist regime and replace it with a free democratic uh, Palestine, which will, yeah, so like I said, it wasn't, oh. which will lead to a peace between the people and prevent this sort of violence. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't really at the beginning, because if we really want to go to being, we'll go all the way back in history. But even on October 7th, I mean, last debate that we had between you and Ivan Lewis, uh, you referenced Amnesty International as a credible source. And Amnesty International actually put out a statement uh, about October 7th. I mean, I can read it out for you if you want, I've got it down, but the part of the statement about October 7th that, saying that they verified that Hamas did a lot of killing and they actually did a, did a lot of really bad stuff. Yeah, well, I, I, that, that's not the information I have. As far as I know, there's no credible information knowing f for sure anything except that the Israelis, uh, that the Israelis uh, killed many Israeli civilians. Okay, Joseph? Okay, so I, it's quite shocking to hear this, Miko. Um, you are a fellow Jew. Um, you're born in Israel. I think you still have Israeli citizenship. You just referenced your cousins who live in um, Beirut. And a few weeks after, I think two or three weeks after the massacre, I visited um, the Gaza envelope. I visited the Kibbutzim. I met with the survivors. I watched the press screening. I watched Hamas carry out what you described as resistance which they filmed themselves and I've seen with my eyes. And if you would like, I've got much of this evidence, which I can share in the chat. I don't want to get the stream banned, so I'm not going to share it publicly. Um, but I will share it with you videos of Hamas beheading people, videos of Hamas murdering children, videos of Hamas indiscriminately shooting at festival goers as they run across the field, shooting at them as if they're game. We have, hundreds of testimonies of rape, witness testimonies of acts of rape. And we have pictures of beheaded corpses from soldiers. And this is also on all the Telegram channels. So if anyone wants to go on um, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, many of the Palestinian, um, as you described them, resistance groups, um, post this on their Telegram. You can go on there, you can view the videos from their sources. Um, carrying out some of the most barbaric acts that are imaginable. You're describing this, these horrors that they inflicted on your people as resistance. 
As I mentioned before, I, 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 I've met your brother-in-law. I see him as a peace activist. He's, he's lost what I cannot imagine. He's been through what I cannot imagine. Yet he's committed himself to peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Your father, your grandfather, a man of peace. Miko, Miko, no, 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 I will not. I did not interrupt you. You do me the courtesy of listening. I sat through your bile and I did not speak once. Wait, 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 let, let Joseph, Joseph, you can quickly finish and then we can go to Miko. Your family, which I will not leave out of it because we are one family, we are one people. We are not a people of peace. You and I are not. A pe you and I have not. A people. You're right. A people of peace. Just by murder and, and, and a people and, of peace. Mika, I think we're going to have to mute while each other's talking. Otherwise, I don't think Mika's capable of self censoring. No, no wait, so Joseph, just go. Let, let's go. Okay. Are you, are you ready, Mika? You can sit quietly. I sat through your bile. Please yeah, sit through mine. Oh, so Mika's been quiet. Joseph, are you able to go? Yes. So these are people of peace. You call yourself a peace activist, yet you are a man of war. You describe savagery as resistance. You do everything that you can to deflect from the horrors of terrorist dogs that butcher women, that butcher the elderly, that butcher children. And you disgustingly, shamefully describe this as resistance. This is not resistance. This is savagery. You also then went on to make numerous outrageous claims that the majority have been... That the majority, I think you said, were killed by Israelis. Provide any source. You said it's well documented in the Israeli press. Are you talking about the Haaretz piece that was rejected by the police who said they were not commenting on IDF helicopters? They were talking on uh, commenting on the police and then that was twisted by Haaretz who had to retract effectively what they'd said. Is this your evidence? Provide your sources. You present yourself as a, as a serious intellect, as an academic. Provide your sources and justify Justify now to the people how you believe that chopping off the heads of infants, of infants, and I will show you the pictures in the chat if you deny this, chopping off the heads of infants is resistance. So, wait, so Joseph, that got really personal there, but Miko, if you actually talk about that, if you go back to the actual points that you made about the evidence, how would you respond to that? There's no evidence. He's a liar. He's a known liar. He's a Zionist propagandist, and, and I'm not going to respond to this nonsense. I mean, uh, okay, I'm not, so can I... I'm, I'm not going to respond to Zionist lies. People who just who, who, who say these things. I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'm... Uh, there's a, uh, you have, I'll answer your questions. I have nothing nothing to say to him. I don't believe his evidence. I know his, not, his evidence is not evidence. This is a, He's a liar and a propagandist, and I have nothing to say to him. So what about if I go back to the point that I made before about Amnesty International, because you reference as a, uh, I, as a reasonable... I've not seen can it. I read that, I can't, can I read out their response? I, their statement? I haven't seen it. And I haven't seen the evidence that they've seen, but I stand by what I say until I'm, I'm, I'm convinced otherwise. Okay, so I get, um, do, by the way, do you believe there's host they've taken hostages in Gaza or they've taken hostages on, from October the 7th? Well, that was the purpose of the, of, of, their, of, the, of the whole thing, is to take hostages so that they can negotiate the release of thousands of Palestinians who were kidnapped, who have been kidnapped by Israel and are, and are languishing in Israeli prisons or being tortured by in, in Israeli jails. And so the whole purpose of this was to take hostages and then negotiate and negotiate a, uh, a, a prisoner exchange, which, of course, obviously lends itself to the to, to understanding why killing people makes no sense. If you want to take hostages to negotiate a prisoner release, why would you kill people? So that's all I have to say about that. OK, so I want to move on to the next question. I think this is a really important question to ask. Um, is what's happening right now in Israel, is that an apartheid? Is that, a, is that an occupation? Uh, Mika, do you want to start? And then I'll go to Joseph. Israel is an apartheid state. I mean, uh, anybody who's been there, anybody, I've lived there, I know it. I mean, I remember seeing the differences between the way Israelis and Palestinians live. I mean, and if nothing else, if nothing else, Israel passed a law that says that only Jews have the right to self-determination uh, throughout all of historic Palestine, which of course uh, is, is really the final, the final um, you know, codifying, if you will, of the apartheid state. But the only way to have a state for Jews in an Arab country is by is, is through an apartheid state. And so from day one, Israel established a state in which Jewish people had rights at the expense of Palestinians. And Palestinians, there's no place in Palestine, there's no 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 area in Palestine at all in which Israelis and Palestinians um, have have the same rights. Israelis are privileged, Jewish people there are privileged at the expense of Palestinians. So there's no question whatsoever that the state of Israel is an apartheid state. Uh, Joseph? 
Okay. Uh, it's very interesting, Miko, that we're on here to debate and you won't address any of my questions. That suggests cowardice and a lack of spine and absolutely no answers. But to address the apartheid, <laughs> course, Mina, <laughs> to address the apartheid, Smith, no, you said you're not going to speak to me, so okay. allow me to speak. It's not a debate. I just want to clarify to the audience, this is not a debate. You're interviewing me or interviewing me. There's no debate. There's no dialogue here. I don't dialogue yeah. with racists. And so there's no debate. But I told you before that it's going to be a panel. It's going to be a debate. Panel is fine. Debate, no. It's not. <laughs> I'll answer you. Okay, Miko. Fine, fine. There's nothing between him and I. Yeah, you're right. You're a weak need Jew. Uh, okay. Joseph, do you want to? It's time to end, uh, to end this. This is, this, is, this is not going to work. Yeah. Not so to, to address the apartheid channel while Miko runs. This guy, this guy, this guy, can't, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a bully. He's a brute. I've met him before. I know what he's capable of. And I don't, I don't see the, the point of this conversation. Okay. Unless, unless you want to manage it differently. I mean, I, I mean, I, I I'm, okay. for, for, the sake of, for the sake of your podcast, Ali, I'm happy to address you and just go back and forth. And I won't speak to Miko. If that's how we've got to do this, fine. Let, um, let's try it. Let's try it. And see okay. It so to address the charge of apartheid, it's, it's absolutely absurd. So Israel has millions of Arabs who live within Israel um, over the, the western side of the Green Line, let's say, for, for simplicity. Um, so not in areas A or B of the, of the West Bank or Gaza. They have full equality with Israeli Jews. They hold political office. They vote in election. They, um, Christian Arabs outperform any other religious group in education. There are Arab judges, as Miko well knows, because he's debated this many times, that have sent Jewish prime ministers and Jewish presidents to jail. In contrast, there is what there is not one Palestinian Jew. Palestinian Jews are banned from Palestinian citizenship under Article 6 of their national charter after they were ethnically cleansed by the Jordanians and the Egyptians in the, the 47, 48, 49, well, sorry, 47, 48 period. The, the charge that he, he brought up the, the nation state law saying that Jews have the right to self-determination in the land of Israel. The Palestinian basic law, which was um, codified long before the, the nation state law, documents the same thing. It says that Palestine is the land for the Arabs. That's an Arab land. They literally have a mirror image. In, you, if you want to look at actual apartheid, if a Jew sells his house to an Arab in Israel, everybody's happy. They exchange contracts, they exchange properties, they exchange money. If an Arab sells his house to a Jew under the Palestinian Authority or Hamas, they face jail or death. Jail or death. And people have the audacity to describe Israel, where Arabs have complete equality with Jews as an apartheid, and then they defend, which is what Miko does on a daily basis, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas who actually enact an, a real apartheid. Why is there not one Palestinian Jew? Miko, would you respond that to me, or would, would you respond to that? No, I'm not sure what the, what the question is. I don't, he's, he's talking, I don't know what the question is. Um, um, why are there no Palestinian Jews? When there's Israeli Arabs, <laughs> it's, an absurd, it's, an, it's an absolutely absurd question. Uh, there's no Pal Palestine is occupied. You can say that all all the Jews who live in Palestine are Palestinian Jews. And all no, the I mean citizens. Are citizens, I'm talking about. Why are there no Jews that hold Palestinian passports? There is no Palestine. Palestine is occupied by Israel. This is a complete Palestinian. Complete, this is a complete. This is a complete nonsense. This is complete absolute nonsense. All of Palestine is occupied by the state of Israel. There is no Palestinian state. There is no Palestinian entity. So, so there's no Palestinian authority, no Palestinian citizenship. There's no Palestinians that pay tax to the Palestinian authority. That this doesn't exist. Well, so there's no such thing as Palestinians, you're saying? No, I didn't say there's no such thing. Okay. Yes. So why are there no Jewish Pal If there are Palestinians, why are there no Jewish? Before the Zionist occupation of Palestine, the Jews who live in Palestine had Palestinian citizenship. My, my parents had a Palestinian passport before the occupation of Palestine by the Zionists. And the Jews who lived there in, in, in you know, generations before were all Palestinian Jews. And, and, and that's how they, they, they framed themselves. When the, Israel, when, when the Zionist occupation took hold, then that changed everything. To pretend that somehow the Palestinian Authority is, is, is a state and, 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 and to treat it as a state is, is complete, no, it's complete, it's, it's hypocrisy, it's nonsense. It's not even, it's not even you know, it's not even deserving a reply. The Palestinian Authority is nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a puppet government that operates for Israel. It's, it's nothing. There is no Palestinian state. And therefore, and, and actually, when Palestine is free and democratic, 
once the apartheid state is uh, is dismantled, then all Jews who live in Palestine will be Palestinian Jews, and they will be have equal rights and live free as as all other religions will. But the, Joseph, do you want to respond to that? To somehow create to somehow create a symmetry between the state of Israel and the Palestinian Authority is complete nonsense because the Palestinian Authority is not a state and they govern nothing. They have no authority whatsoever. So I mean, to pretend that there's somehow a symmetry here is 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 really like I said, it's 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 it's. I don't know if it's if it's um, ignorance or, or some kind of joke. I'm, I'm not sure, but this is nonsense. Okay, so do you have another okay. question? Um, can Sorry, I respond well, to that? You quickly respond, and then I'll move on to the next question. Okay, so very very quickly, I, I think this is um, very bizarre. So you accept that there are Palestinians. You accept that there's a Palestinian National Authority. You expect that there's ex they accept that they define what the law and they govern over the Palestinians. And my question is very simple. Why don't they govern any Jews? And the answer is because of Article 6 of their National Charter bans Jews from being citizens. Article 6 of their National it, Charter, you can deny that exists. Yeah, they have no authority over any place that Jews reside. The Jews took the cut. But, but you're, you're, creating, you're creating this absurd reality as though there were Jews. It's the other way around. Israel took their land, built settlements for Jews only, and then said, okay, these little ghettos, these little ghettos will be the Palestinian Authority. And so there are no Jews there because Israel took the land and built separately for Jews only, as the apartheid state has done throughout all of historic Palestine. So that's why there are no Jews in the Palestinian Authority, because the Palestinian Authority was created over ghettos of Palestinians. And even according, even according to, to official Israeli, um, you know, official Israeli, you know, right, literature and so on, the, it, it, within the, within the bureaucracy, it says that there are in in what they call Judea and Samaria, which is what used to be the West Bank. They have you know this is a, a part of Israel where Jews live, except for pockets of of what they call an alien population. So to somehow say that it's the Palestinians' fault that the Jews don't live with Palestinians and equality is turning the whole thing upside down. Israel created the apartheid state. Israel created the segregation. Israel created the ghettos. Israel created the, the prison of the Gaza Strip. Israel, Israel is the one who's been segregating and, 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 and again, enforcing a, a, a brutal apartheid state from the very, very beginning. That's why there are no Jews who are Palestinians because the state of Israel has taken over Palestine. Initially, the Jews who lived in Palestine were Palestinians, exactly like you say, until the state of Israel came and, and created the apartheid state. And, and messed it all up and created the segregation where Palestinians only uh, live on whatever limited land uh, they're permitted. So this, so this is, is, more, ups, ups, is completely upside down. So this is more civil conversation. I understand what you're saying. Uh, maybe I'm not being clear. So from 47, 48, the Jews were ethnically cleansed from the territories that Egypt and Jordan took control of. So I have friends who were living in the Gaza. They were ethnically cleansed. They have friends, um, they obviously they're, they're parents, they're, the, they're my generation. Um, there were communities that were living in what you would call the West Bank. Jews were ethnically cleansed in 1947, 1948? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give some examples. Really? So yeah. there was a large... Oh, there's since, no you don't need to expand on this nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay. In, since 1844, the majority population of Jerusalem, the majority population of Jerusalem was Jewish. When Jordan conquered the old city... And um, there was not one Jew allowed to permit. The Jordans, Jordanians enacted the law that banned... Two seconds, Mika, two seconds. I did listen, and I'm trying to have a civil conversation. No you can ridicule and you can mock. There's no but... conversation here. Fine. So there's no conversation. Let me address the audience. If there's no... Con and then you can correct me. You can correct the record. So the Jordanians took the old city of Jerusalem, which had a large Jewish community prior to it. They enacted a law which banned Jews from citizenship. It's the same with Shimon Atzadik and Nachalat Shimon, Israel, um, Israel the, the Yemenite village. Israel evacuated the Jews from those places. That's not true. Israel evacuated the Jews. From Israel didn't exist in Israel, 47. The Zionist forces, the Zionist, first of all, the Zionist forces evacuated the Jews from these places where Jews had resided. You're right, Jews resided Mika, in Jerusalem. Are you, I just want to get this straight. Are you <laughs> seriously suggesting, are you seriously suggesting that the Jordanians did not drive Jews out of the West Bank? Is that your, is that your claim on record? Israel. Okay, comments, go, go to work. Mika Israel. is claiming that the Jordanians did not, did not remove one Jew from the West Bank. Okay, so let, Mika, do you want to respond or should we just move on to the next question? I mean, there's nothing to respond to. 
Okay, I'll just move on to the next question. So, Jason, I'm going to start with you and then go to Miku. So, since October the 7th, Israel has been, uh, Israel, I mean, you've seen what's happened really in Gaza. Uh, 20,000 people have been reported dead, which is it's a, lot, it's a lot of people. I mean, is, the IDF even killed, as Miku referenced early on in this debate, they killed three of their own hostages. The, I mean, of their, their own citizens, really, that were hostages. Uh, can you not admit how bad this is? War is horrible. The difference between myself and Miko is Miko will get up Wait, here. Wait, are you able to answer the, uh, the question? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. So, war is horrible. There have been... There's no way of knowing how many Palestinians have died in the, the conflict in Gaza. There is a huge um, civilian population, and half of those are under the age of 18. It's that a Palestinian child is as sacred as an Israeli Jewish child. There's no difference. They, they, their life is worth the same. When I look at what's happening in Gaza, I, I, I'm on Palestinian media every single day. I see the images coming out of there and they're harrowing, they're heartbreaking. I am not going to to um, use your platform, my voice, to cheerlead any conflict. I want the conflict, like everyone else, to end as speedily as possible. I think where Miko and myself will depart uh, is over who is ultimately responsible for that. Um, I sat not so long ago with a good pal uh, with a Palestinian friend of mine. He'd lost fourteen cousins. He'd lost close family members. Um, I don't believe that, that there's nothing I can say. There's, there's nothing I would want to say to try and justify that. What I want is an end to Hamas. On the 7th of October, Hamas kissed, uh, committed the biggest, biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. They've told us repeatedly they will do it again and again and again. The only way to ensure that we don't just continuously repeat this horrendous cycle of, violent, of violence is to eliminate Hamas. So war is ugly. Israel has and will continue to make mistakes, and those mistakes come at a huge cost for all parties. But there is no alternative, because the alternative is this continuous war. The alternative is to allow those that rape children that kidnap Holocaust survivors, that behead civilians. The alternative is to allow those savages to do the same thing again and again and again and again. Uh, Joseph, just, so I just want to push on that. First of all, I do apologize when, when I interrupt. Yeah, I thought you were yeah, going yeah, off track. Yeah, Let me... I'm sorry, this is not going to work. I'm, I'm leaving. Why, this. Why, what's... I'm not sitting with this man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not entertaining this man. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe another time with somebody else. I'm not entertaining this man. Goodbye. Okay. See you. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that, Joseph? Miko is spineless. Miko sits there and presents himself as a peace activist. Miko is not a man of peace. He is a man of war. He sat there and denied what all of us have seen with our eyes. Anybody who's watching this stream can go on Telegram, can scroll back to the 7th of October, the 8th of October, the 9th of October, and the 10th of October, and see the videos that Hamas, the Islamic Jihad, and many of those that crossed into Israel shared on their own social media. They live streamed this. There's a website, hamas-massacre.net. You can see the more tame images on there. You can see images of beheaded babies. You can see images of horrendous things. And that's the tame material that's in the public domain. I visited the kibbutzim in the, on, the, on the Gaza border. I saw, I walked through the homes that were splattered with blood on the walls. I, I looked and smelt death everywhere. For Miko, who had cousins in these places, to stand there and defend the monsters that carried out those acts is not an act of peace, that is an act of war. Miko is a man of war and a defender of some of the most barbaric um, terrorists that mankind has known. There are many, many, many Israelis, Jews, and non-Jews 
who have committed themselves to peace between Israelis and Palestinians, who do incredible advocacy in the name of peace. But what they don't do is cheerlead these monsters. And that's why Miko has run. Miko has run from this debate because I'm holding a mirror up to some of the horrendous rhetoric and actions that he's defending. Uh, so it does not surprise me that Miko left. Oh, and I just want to be clear just before we end this. I, first of all, this is unprecedented. Number two, I would never usually just let you go on a rant against, not on a rant, but go on, uh, just go on about someone else without be, being the, the other person being present to respond. But he left, so uh, it's just, but this is just completely, I did, like I said, I did tell him before what it was going to be like, but unfortunately he's left, so I guess we're going to have to end it here. Yeah, and this is after he cancelled twice as well. So I'd like this, but hey. Well, thank yeah. you for joining at least, Joseph. And uh, Miko, I'm sure you're going to be listening to this. Thank you for joining and uh, hopefully we can sort something out.